my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. We are now in Unit 3, Lesson 5 of Random Forest. And in this video, we're going to combine um, doing random forest for regression. The testing, I'm sorry, the, the model development and the testing all in one lesson because we're familiar with the basic ideas and we're going to focus on completing this in one video. So here we are, we're inside our studio. Now there's one new library or package that we need to load in order to have success here. Now this is assuming that you loaded all the packages that were available in lesson 3-2. But the package that we're going to add this time is going to be metrics. And what that package does, it has a MAE function in it, me absolute error function already pre-made for us before we made it in the past ourselves. Now in line 3 of our code, we're going to set our seed to 10 and then in lines 4 through 6, we have our actual model. So we're going to call it model underscore enroll. We're going to use the train function and inside the train function, we want to predict enrollment. How many students a school is going to have based on their graduation rate, out of state, whether they're out of state or in state, room and board costs, books, PhDs, student faculty ratio expen ex expenses, and of course whether it's private or public university. So those are what we're, that's what we're doing here. And so our data here in line six is the training set, the method is random forest, the, the approximation is set to true, and this is new, you gotta set the importance to true as well. Otherwise you will not be able to get the various, in, the various uh, variable importance plot. So I already ran lines four through six before the video because it takes a few moments and we don't wanna sit here and waste time. And so now in line eight, we can take a look at a plot that'll show us the importance of each variable. So you can see right here, you can see whether it's private or public, that's the most important variable, followed by per PhD status, out of state, expense, software on board, and of course books has not mattered ever in these videos. So that's what that's telling us. So we know the, the various um, things to expect for in terms of variable importance in our actual model. Now what we're doing here in lines 10, all the way down to oh, lines 18, I don't need this here, lines uh, 17, excuse me, is we are taking a look at, we're going to uh, make our prediction model, and of course we're going to use our testing data. So now in line 10, we're going to create a new object called pre underscore enroll, that's the prediction enrollment, enrollment of, prediction of the enrollment, and we're going to use the predict function, and of course we're going to use our model plus our new data. That's what's going on here in this particular line. And so if I press control enter, it'll run. And now we're going to compare the correlation of the predicted values with the actual values in the test set. And the higher the correlation, the more accurate it is. So you can see here that we got a correlation of 0.68. That's not bad. Another way that we can see how we're doing here is by using the summary function. Because the summary statistics should be similar for the test set and the predicted enrollment. So. That's for the test set right there, and this is for the predicted, for the prediction model. So I'm going to zoom in on this one to uh, get a better picture here. So you can see that right there. Um, you can see here that we have some problems with uh, low values here at the end, but in the first quartile, I mean, you know, it's up to you how good that is. It seems reasonable. Median, it starts to improve even more. By the time we get to the mean, it's much closer. Then by the third quartile, and then up to the max, we start to wander off again. So. What probably happens that we have some really small universities, and then we have like some really large universities that are like outliers that are probably kind of infecting, uh, affecting the results here a little bit. So go ahead and zoom out. Now, in line 16, we're going to use the MAE function to calculate the mean absolute value. So 391. So what this mean absolute value means is that you know on, on any given prediction is off by about 390 students. Now, whether this is good or bad depends on the context. If you're dealing with a university that have you know 40,000, 50,000 people, it's not, it's not too bad. Uh, of course, that's not the case. You can see our max here is about 3,400 <laughs> and 6,300. Uh, if you're dealing with a small university of about 1,000 people, that's a large amount of error. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. It all depends on what your goals are and how, how much you want to reduce that absolute error. And then lastly, over here off to our right is the plot here that gives you a picture that when we compare the relationship between the predict the testing enrollment and the prediction enrollment. And so this is that correlation of 0.68 that we saw a few moments ago. 
So you can see there's kind of a general trend. It's, it's pretty good down here, but when you start getting to like really large universities, when I mean by large in this particular context, about over a thousand, it really just starts to spread out pretty pretty crazy. And so that's where we're having our problems at. So the, you know, the best fit line might be something like this. But anyway, having said that, you now know how to perform, how to train a model using random force for regression, how to determine the variable importance, and also how to predict with that model with the testing data and to compare how the prediction model uh, performs when compared to the ground truths found in the testing data. So knowing this, you could of course make adjustments to what you're doing. And one thing I did forget to mention that if you type in model underscore enroll the name of your object, you will get the three different values that is set for the M try, which again is like how many variables it might consider at each break. And so you can see for this one, the best option was two. It had the, the lowest error. So I hope this is useful for you and that you kind of understood what we were talking about. The all Many of the tools that we talked about in this video were applied in, in the last video for classification. But here, because we're doing regression, we're not going to be looking at accuracy. We're going to be looking at reducing error. That's the difference. So I hope that you understood what we were talking about. My name is, uh, this was a, my name is Darren Thomas. I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques, and this is Easier, Practical Applications of Machine Learning Algorithms in R. Take care.